So here's, here's the case of our married taxpayers. Um, they were joint, they were joint filers, right? They got assessed for, uh, $18,600. When you stop and think about that, if you look at, if you look at the dates on here, you'll see there's about, uh, five months of elapsed time between April and September. And we're going to be kind to them and assume that they, that they filed, so there's no failure to file penalty but only the failure to pay penalty. And at 5% per month for five months, that's a 25% add-on. So you can see that their actual tax liability was probably in the vicinity of $14,000. And with penalties and interest at this point, it's, uh, well, well, not at this point, but at the time the notice of federal tax lien was recorded, it was already up to $18,600. Now, and the other thing you might want to notice is when the statute of limitations expires, right? 2019, 10 years from the date of the uh, filing. Okay, so let's take this example. And we have about eight or nine different scenarios that, uh, that, that Bill and Abby are involved in. We're going to take each one individually, as I said before. They're not cumulative. So, right? Here's what we want to do. We want to determine right, whether the whether the property at their residence address is actually encumbered by the federal tax lien. Right. We saw this scenario before. They owe eighteen thousand six hundred dollars. The federal tax lien was recorded in St. John's County, Florida. Anybody want to take a shot at it with the chat, or uh, shall I just drive on? You can just drive on for the uh, subsequent examples. I'll uh, I'll encourage people to uh, to submit their answers or their thoughts uh, via the chat. Okay. So you know the the object is to determine whether that federal tax lien attaches to the property right, at 10 Maple Street, the, their residence address, and we need to do a little homework in order to get there. So we'll search the records, the official records of the Clerk of Circuit Court of St. John's County, Florida. And we find, first of all, the federal tax lien that was referenced in, in the initial scenario. And uh, it has a serial number 999-9999. And we'll keep that in mind because we have another one coming up later. And, 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 and we'll, we'll use that to differentiate between this one and that one. So let's look at examples A through I. Okay. In, in addition to the federal tax lien that we found, we found a warranty deed for the property. And guess who owns it? Seymour, Seymour Fillmore. By the way, that's a, another president. All right. Millard, Millard Fillmore. Everybody, everybody from Buffalo will know who that is. Now, uh, Billy Fillmore was from, uh, I believe, East, East Aurora, New York, for those of you who are history buffs. Okay. But the question is, does the, does the tax claim attach? And the answer is no, because the Van Burens are just tenants. They do not own the property. They have no right title or interest in that property. And Seymour Fillmore makes a very nice living out of renting those Florida properties to snowbirds from the north uh, year after year. Okay, let's take another example. Same scenario, same Bill and Abby, Bill and Abby Van Buren. Let's discount the, the, the previous example. That's gone. All right, Seymour Fillmore. We found, we found the lien again in our search, and now we find the warranty deed granting title to the 10 Maple Street Realty Trust. Now, so is the federal tax lien recorded against Bill and Abby attach? No, it doesn't. All right. We, we don't know who the 10 Maple Real, uh, 10 Maple Street Realty Trust is. All right. Could be anybody. Uh, could be Bill and Abby. More, more, more likely it's Seymour Fillmore. So, but the bottom line is the property belongs to a trust. 
And that's a separate entity. And, and the tax lien recorded against that married couple does not attach to this property. And we'll move on to the next slide here. All right. And there's, there's the answer. All right. And title is granted, right title and interest is granted to the Realty Trust. And again, here's uh, example C. The same basic premise applies. Uh, Jim and Abigail Van Buren have the federal tax lien uh, filed in the amount of 18600 We found that again. But this time we found the warranty deed that granted title to um, William Van Buren LLC as a single member disregarded entity. Now this, this isn't a class on trust and this isn't a class on LLCs. And there could be a lot of ways to, that people own LLCs. There could be LLCs that own LLCs, partnerships that own LLCs, corporations that own LLCs, and so on. But in this case, William Van Buren LLC, as a single member disregarded entity, is in fact one and the same as the LLC. And so we can conclude that the lien will attach. And there's an answer slide that's going to come up here. There it is. And we see that uh, the LLC and William are virtually one and the same. And let's go on to, and the, the reason I'm doing this is to, is to point out that there are, there are different ways that the, the federal tax lien can attach to these properties, and it takes a lot of research to figure out what's really going on here. Okay, another example, and again, the same basic premise, William and Abigail Van Buren have a federal tax lien recorded against them. We found that. Now we find the deed to the property, and lo and behold, William's name is on it. Not Abigail, but William's brother Julius is on there. They bought that property years ago as tenants in common. It was it was a great investment. And so the federal tax lien recorded against William Van Buren attaches to his separable interest in that property. And if we do a little more research, we're going to find out that when the brothers purchased that property, they had intended originally to do it on a 50-50 basis, but William didn't have enough money to to do that, and so Julius stepped up to the plate, and uh, he put in 60%, William put in 40%, and the federal tax lien attaches to William's 40% separable, separable interest in the property. So if the property is assessed for $100,000, I... Uh, the federal tax lien attaches to $40,000 worth, which if the property is sold would be enough to satisfy the federal tax lien. And let's go on to another. And once again, the same basic premise. William and Abigail Van Buren have that federal tax lien. This time we found a quick claim deed. Granting title to William and Abigail. The federal tax lien will attach to this property. However, and we'll go to the answer slide, what we're going to find out is since they acquired the property without clear title, without a valid title search, in other words, all right, uh, there could be prior encumbrances or federal tax liens and state tax liens or anything else from the previous owner that go with that property. And so in, in this particular case, if, if there was a prior federal tax lien, the tax lien recorded against William and Abby would uh, fall behind the existing, in, in order of priority, would fall behind the existing federal tax lien, assuming there, are, there, there is one, and, and there might not be. Uh, another example, this, one, this one's the straightforward example. Okay, you uh, you did the title search at the clerk of circuit court of St. John's County. Again, you found the federal tax lien recorded against William and Abby. And this time you found the deed. And it's a warranty deed recorded against William and Abigail. They own the property. Right title and interest, all theirs. There is no doubt, no ifs, ands, buts, or maybes 
that the federal tax lien attaches to this property. We're going to take that one step further in the next slide here. Yeah, this is this is the only example. Well, this one, I think, and uh, where these two go together. This example G ties into example F that we just looked at. Since William and Abigail owned that property, at the time they purchased it in 1999, they also gave a mortgage to the Eisenhower Bank in exchange for the loan to purchase the the property. Right? And that mortgage was recorded at the time of the closing uh, in uh, May of 1999. And the significance of that, of course, is that the mortgage is in a priority position over the federal tax fund. So, and as I noted on the slide, uh, this example applies only to F above because they clearly owned the property before. Here's another little variant. We see this in Florida. I don't, I don't know how many other states allow this. This is something called an agreement for deed. Uh, it's sort of like a lease to purchase or rent to purchase. The, um, the seller and the, the, the willing seller and willing buyers can execute the agreement for deed and, uh, and, and record it. And, and once that's done, and again, this is in the state of Florida. Uh -huh. um, then uh, the, the the willing buyer then has title to the property. Uh -huh. so the seller, in this case, Mr. Fillmore, he has a lien against the property. He's essentially holding the mortgage. So, and as and as long as he gives them the property being free and clear, uh, uh, ultimately they will own it. In this particular case. A federal tax lien against William and Abigail will attach to the property. 